Welcome to the setup video for the first scenario in the Path to Carcosia Deluxe Expansion. This is Curtain Call, and the modest setup instructions can be found on page 3 of the Campaign Guide. You will need 7 encounter sets, 5 of which are found in the Carcosa Deluxe box, and 2 of which come from the original core set. This is the 6 card Evil Portent set consisting of two copies of Black Star's Rise, two copies of Spires of Carcosa, and two Twisted to His Will. This is the six-card Delusion set, consisting of two copies of Descent into Madness, and four copies of Whispers in Your Head, all of which are different. Most of these keywords should be familiar to you, and you can look them up in the rules reference, but Hidden is a new one introduced in the Path to Carcosa set, and it's defined on the front page of the Path to Carcosa campaign guide. This is the four card haunting set, consisting of two copies of Spirit's Torment, and two copies of the enemy Poltergeist. This is the Cult of the Yellow Sign encounter set. There are six cards, and they are three copies of the Fanatic enemy, one copy of the Agent of the King enemy, and two copies of the Treachery King's Edict. From the original core box, you will need the three copies of Swarm of Rats. Also, from the core box, is the seven card Striking Fear set, which is two copies of Dissonant Voices, two copies of Frozen in Fear, and don't forget, three copies of Rotting Remains. And you can shuffle up all of these to make the encounter deck. Finally, you have the encounter set, which is specific to this scenario. As always, it's named after the scenario, therefore it's called Curtain Call, and it consists of 20 cards, beginning with the scenario reference card. And the first thing you'll want to do is remove and set aside cards 19 and 20, the two at the back. That's the Royal Emissary and the Man with the Pallid Mask. And the Man with the Pallid Mask has a player back if you're having trouble finding him. Once you've done that, flip the cards over and you have the unrevealed side of the locations. Unfortunately, the encounter set numbers only appear on the revealed side of the locations, so it can be a balance between finding the right cards and avoiding spoilers. Here's an example, we're on the revealed side of the theatre, and it's only on this side that you find the scenario encounter set numbers, the symbol, and the set number. You're going to want to remove and set aside the next six cards, which are three copies of Backstage Doorway and three copies of Lobby Doorway. Put those with the Royal Emissary and the Man in the Pallid Mask. This leaves you with four locations which start in play, and there's a handy suggested placement diagram in the campaign guide. All of your investigators are going to begin play at the theatre, so you can go ahead and flip that over. If one player has chosen to play the unpredictable Lola Hayes, she begins play backstage, her being an actress and everything. So you can go ahead and flip that one over, but obviously we're not going to spoilers stuff. This is how your locations line up on the first turn, with the backstage and the lobby having connections to locations which aren't yet in play, so please be patient. The final thing to note about this encounter set is you have three identical copies of Act 2A, all labelled The Stranger. Previous scenarios have given you multiple copies of the same location, and you choose one, and put it into play, and remove the rest from play. That way it adds a little bit of replayability. This scenario does that with the Act deck. So you're going to choose one of the three copies of Act 2A, The Stranger, at random, remove the other two from the game, ready to use in a future game. They all look identical on the front, and we're not going to tell you what's on the back. If you forget, there is a handy reminder on the back of Act 1A, assuming you live that long. And unusually, all three cards are labelled 5 to 7 out of 20. This is good, because it means people on the internet don't freak out thinking they're missing cards if they all have the same number. And also, it doesn't give you a clue to which side is on the back, because all three of them are different, and hideously bad. If all goes well, we hope your setup looks a little something like this. You've got four locations in play, and all your investigators start at the theatre, except if there's a Lola Hayes involved, and she starts backstage. You've set aside three copies of the backstage doorway, three copies of the lobby doorway, the man in the pallid mask, and the royal emissary. You've chosen the difficulty level on your scenario card, and built your chaos bag accordingly. You've built your encounter deck, there are two agenda cards, and there are three act cards. The middle one, Act 2A, has been chosen at random, and you've removed the other two copies from play. And it looks like you're all ready to go. We hope you have a lot of fun. And as with any new scenario, there are all sorts of little tweaks and hidden surprises to surprise you. Surprising surprises. Who would have thunked it? 
We'd like to take a moment to dedicate this video to Richard Forster, one of our amazing Kickstarter backers who contributed to keep us going and making videos. Oh, hello Richard! Oh, hello! Thank you ever so much. What did you think of our fancy computer graphics? These things here. Well, they aren't fancy ILM CGI, they're actually real things that you can pick up and stab yourself with. Ow! These are some prototype connectors. They were kind enough to let us have a play with. Ta very much!